ladies and gentlemen, um, the title of my presentation is the development of success criteria for high density fluid fund tailings flocculation in oil sand industry. First of all, I would like to introduce my co-authors, uh, Barry Barrow and uh, Ron Simon. They both are my colleagues from Synchro Research and Development Center. <clears throat> so this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, I will uh, briefly talk about the difference between the diluted FFT flocculation and the high density FFT flocculation and the objectives of this project. Then I would like to di discuss the experimental materials, flocculant, lab tested facilities, and the measurement of year stress, capillary suction time, CST, uh, lab centrifuge index, and the visual flux structures and the size. So I will focus on the results and the discussions on the development of the four uh, cr success cr criteria for high density FFT flocculation and their applications. At the end of the presentation, I will give you the conclusions and the uh, acknowledgement. <clears throat> so it's the well known that the, you know, the dilution of a signal feed is one of the most effective methods for uh, fine clay flocculation and, and the polymer dosage re reduction. However, for the FFD centrifuge and the thin lift and all thick lift, you know, we could not dilute the, the FFD to the same level as in the thickener applications <clears throat> because that is not economical. So these two videos just to show you, you know, what's the difference when you uh, uh, do the flocculation test. If you dilute your FFD to 5% and you can see this settle, this is the same time, this settle very fast. And this is, we already know, we have this criteria to judge the flocculation performance. For example, the initial settling rate should be more than 20 meters per hour, and the supernatant clarity should be less than 0.5% of total solid, and the sediment density, at least it should be more than 35% of solid content, and it depends on your sand fund ratio. And however, for the high density of FFT, you can see here, you know, you know after one hour or two hours set, set, settling, it, you cannot see clearly super little water released from here. So now people have a question. For this high density FFT flocculation, do you have a success criteria to judge your flocculation performance? So that is the, the, the objectives for this project. See, our, uh, one of these projects you know, is to develop the success criteria for high density FFG flocculation and also uh, verify their applications to high density FF, FFT flocculation and centrifugation. Now I would like to briefly talk about the, you know, the test materials. <clears throat> Here the test material we used is synchronous FFT with about 35% solid content and 95 to 100% minus 44 uh, micron fine. Uh, the flocculant tested were uh, polymer A is linear and polymer B is branched. So we tested two types of polymers and this, you know, here is the, the test of, uh, lab tested facilities we, uh, we have. Here, yes, we have motor, we have a torque sensor, and this is the mixing tank. And this tank, we believe, is the uh, small, smallest size of the tank for scale up. Okay, so uh, we actually uh, successfully scale up from this size to uh, uh, fill the pallet and um, prototype dynamic mixing tank. And we have a, a flocculant injection pump from here, and also we have you know, impeller speed control box here. And of course we have an online data acquisition system, so you can monitor and record the, the RPM, the power, and the, the torque um, uh, from, you know, <coughs> transport uh, by, by the impeller. So in this case, you can uh, 
uh, based on the, this data, you know, you can scale up your mixing tank. And also you can correlate your flocculation performance and, you know, and this uh, uh, torque power RPM. So this is the experimental uh, uh, procedures we use. I just uh, briefly, you know, talk about that. So first you just uh, fill about uh, 18 kilo FFT slurry into this uh, 350 meter tank. Um, and set up the, you know, the online data acquisition and start mixing at a given speed. So uh, <clears throat> then you pump the flocculant solution into the tank where you injection pour continuously and in a given time. And then you shut down the flocculant injection pump at about 3.5 times or whatever you can control, like 2 meter, 1 meter, and based on the dosage you want. Uh, and also, the same, uh, then you keep you know, the impeller running for an additional five minutes, which means you can evaluate uh, if you have an uh, additional share, what is that impact on your flocculation performance and the dewatering and the how, and the year stress, okay? And take the samples at a different time after you inject the flock, flocculant at a time zero, up to five minutes. Then you measure the year stress, CST, and the centrifuge index, and then take pictures of flock structures of the sam samples right after the uh, each test. So here is the measurement, you know, of these uh, four criteria. First is the the year stress uh, of these uh, flocculated materials, and second is the capillary sucking time. And so this gives you, you know, the index, you know, how fast of your flocculated material dewater. And this is the lab centrifuge index. And uh, we uh, and operated the lab centrifuge at the 3,000 RPM for two minutes. And that gives you a quick index, you know, how fast of your flocculated material can dewater. And uh, the last one is, uh, you can take a picture of the flock structure and the size, you can look at it visually, how good your flux look like. Now I would like to you know, share this uh, test results with you. Uh, <clears throat> and first, let's look at the, the development of the four criteria for high density FFT flocculation. So this figure you can show you, you see, this is the, the year stress. Uh, as a function of the uh, post flocculant share time. You see, for the good flock, uh, flocculation, you can see your year stress at the time zero, you got the highest year stress. When you uh, increase the share time, your year stress is going down. For the poor flocculation, you know, your year stress is almost the same as your FFT, so it's not changing very much. So. <clears throat> The figure in the middle shows the CST. You can see for the uh, good flocculation, your years, you know, for this feed materials, which is 20% uh, solids of FFT, so, you know, your year stress, uh, sorry, your CST going up uh, with your uh, sharing time, which means you, if you share too much, your dewater is getting poor. Uh, for the uh, and also you can compare this uh, t you know, good flocculation and poor flocculation very clearly use this uh, CST you know, uh, criteria. The third one is the uh, uh, centrifuge index. You see for the good flocculation, your uh, centrate solid content is always lower than 0.4%, but for the poor uh, flocculation, your cent centrate solid content more than 1%. So you can easily see from the color and from the measurement, quickly see the performance of your flocculation. And this is the, you know, the picture of these uh, uh, flock structures and uh, size. You can see here at uh, time zero, you just after you know, your injection of your flocculant, you can see this uh, the flock structure you know, is big. Uh, when you increase the, the, you know, the uh, share time and your flock, it was broken, and then you can see at, after five minutes, you're back to almost the original F, FFT. So for the poor flocculation, yes, your 
particle size of flux almost the same. And this is another, you see, <coughs> application of these four criteria uh, for, um, to, to judge, you know, the, the flocking performance of one polymer, polymer A, uh, the, the dosage test. Okay, you can see here, when you, uh, there are no, if there are no polymer here, your year stress is like seven or eight Pascal for this 20% solid content. And then if you increase your dosage, it's not much change. Until you inch, uh, increase the dosage to some level, it's, here it's uh, close to um, 800 gram protein, you can see your year stress sharply increase. Right, you keep increase, your dosage, you know, it's you're going up a little bit. However, uh, for the CST, you can see without, you know, um, uh, flocculant, your CST number is sky high, more than one thousand a second. And when you added the flocculant, uh, flocculant, your CST number going down, going down, and suddenly, you know, at about 800 gram per ten, you can see here it's less than 50 seconds. Okay, so this, uh, this is a, another uh, figure shows show the centrifuge centrate, the solid content. You can see here, without the flocculant, your centrate, the solid content is 20 percent. It's almost, almost, almost the same as your feed. Okay, so uh, so that answers some people's question. Without the polymer, can you do the centrifuge? The answer is no. Okay. So then, when you increase the dosage of the polymer, and you can see the centrate of solid content, you know, reduce to less than 0.4 or 0.5%. And you can see here. So this is a three criteria clearly show you, you know, uh, <coughs> the clearly uh, give you the tool to judge the flocking performance. Is it good or not? And also you can see here, this is uh, uh, the picture clearly show you, you know, when you increase the dosage, you know, from 500 gram per day to 800 gram per day, you see the, the flux structures changing not much. It's just, you know, after 800 gram per day, you can see this, uh, the flux uh, particles clearly formed. And yes, you increase, you, you increase the, 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 uh, the, the flux size. Okay, another thing is for the application of, of these four criteria, as I said before, we, we have a, a, a monitoring of the torque of the impeller. So you can see uh, without the flux, and your torque is like this, right? When you uh, gradually inject the polymer, you can see your, uh, your torque increase, which indicates your, your stress uh, or whatever your rheology dramatically changes in your mixing tank. So that's the big challenge. When you increase the flux length and also your, your reality change at the same time. So you can see here it's going to up to a peak air area. And this is the, actually the end of our mixing, uh, 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 the end of the flux length injection. Okay, so then at this point we take a sample to measure the, uh, the year stress and CST Right? and also the centrifuge, centrifuge index test. So then you can see after uh, more sharing, the, the torque is going down, going down. And you can see here the, uh, the uh, CST number at the, this peak area, this is the gel structure formed. And at this, this, this almost no water released. Even you get a, quite a high year stress at here. So you have to uh, massage a little bit of your flux structures, try to break a little bit, not much, of this uh, gel-like structure. Then your CST, you know, dramatically reduced, and you get a lot of water released, you know, from this deposit. So then, if you continue, you know, mixing too much, your CST number going up again. So you get you, you, you get you know hard time to de, you know, de, de water of your uh, deposit, right? So of course if you uh, overshare and uh, your your stress all going down, right? So uh, this is the summarize of this is uh, you know the, the four stages that we uh, observe. The first stage is the flux injection, 
right? The second stage is the, the, the slightly sharing or massage of this gel, gel structure, as I said, that will help, you know, the water release. So the stage three, this is slightly, you know, flock breakdown and the faster water release. That is the operation window you need to control. It doesn't matter you use dynamic mixer or inline static mixer. So that's the, the stage you want to control. And you, are <coughs> you, you, you would like to use these this four criteria to judge the performance based on the samples you get. So as I said before, oversharing of these flocks, you will kill the flocks and you, uh, the dewatering is hard. Okay, I just show you, you know, the last uh, slide show you our um, correlation between the uh, fine capture in the field centrifuge and also, you know, the uh, dynamic mixing tip speed. You can see here, uh, there is uh, some peak, you know, uh, fine capture and also correlated to, you know, the uh, the best, you know, tip speed of the dynamic mixer. And here is the conclusions. Uh, four criteria of year stress and CST, uh, lab centrifuge index, and the visual flux structures were successfully uh, established. So, and also the application of these four criteria were validated in the live flocculation test and also in the FFT uh, field test. For centrifuge, uh, this online monitor data and give uh, monitor data of torque, power, and speed during the entire period of the time give you a better understanding of the flocculation mechanism, and that help a lot for the understanding, uh, you know, to understand you know the uh, the, the uh, judgment of the flocculation performance. And uh, as I said before, this this is 350 meter. A millimeter tank was successfully uh, used to scale up to a larger field and a prototype that uh, dynamic mixer. And we would recommend you know, these four criteria for uh, <coughs> to other applications like a thin lift, thick lift, you know, centrifuge, you know, anything you involved in the FFT flocculation to judge the flocculation performance. And here is the uh, acknowledgement we would like to Thank you know, all the people involved in this project. Thank you.